welcome to Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez. On today's show, we're going to feature two summer traditions in Lincoln. The Meadowlark Music Festival and Salt Dogs Baseball, both are in their 11th year. But we're going to start today with Jeff Mull from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And Jeff, the end of the school year always means state tournaments. It does, and we're very excited this year to welcome the NSA State High School Boys Baseball Championships to Lincoln, Nebraska. We're playing on three very nostalgic fields, one of which is Sherman Field, Absolutely. which has recently gone under some outstanding renovations. There will be a Den Hartog Field as well as the championship games for classes A and B at Haymarket Park, uh, home of the Salt Dogs and the University of Nebraska. All right, and then we're moving right into golf. That's right. We'll be hosting the class, class A State High School uh, Golf Championships for um, numerous years now we've hosted it here and we'll be at Holmes Lake Golf Course this year. We anticipate 72 golfers competing over multiple days right here in Lincoln. All right, and a couple of big soccer events coming up starting with the Capital Soccer Association. Been hosting this for over 25 years. Wow. It is amazing. They do a lot for uh, the youth in Lincoln as far as soccer goes. Um, they had last time around almost 90 teams. I believe they're setting about 90 this time around. Brings teams from all over the Midwest and potentially, as in the past years, we've had a team from Canada come into Lincoln for this. International tournament. Yes, wow. wonderful soccer tournament. All right, and then the Chris Walters Memorial. Yeah, this is uh, the U9s through the U19s, all ages uh, enjoying this event. The tournament is named after Chris Walters, who founded the soccer club right here in Lincoln. All right, let's go out to the event center, and as usual, a couple of nice horse shows coming up. One of my favorites, the Arabian Horse Association of Nebraska puts on a great event that features working cow cutting, reigning English pleasure, western, hunt seat, county pleasure, trail, and costume. Ooh. And both youth and adult um, ages uh, will be participating in this event at the event center. And then a smaller version of the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've actually talked about the Blue Stem Miniature Horse Show for many years now. Um, what's neat about this is they'll be jumping and dancing miniature horses all weekend long at the event center. They feature on uh, one of the days a Liberty class that are set to music. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so you can watch some small horses dance on the big stage <laughs> at uh, the Lancaster Event <laughs> Center. All right, and some great uh, motor events coming up, starting with the Hot Rod Super Nationals. Yeah, Lincoln has long been a wonderful host to a lot of, a lot of automotive events over the years. We started years ago with Americruise, and we've rolled into the Hot Rod Super Nationals. This will be at the event center. Over 1,500 street rods of all makes and models will be featured. Um, during the weekend, there are discount coupons available at multiple sites in the city. Um, we also do have some $2 off coupons that are available at the event, um, event center. I believe they'll have a stack out there, chamber office, or at our visitor center at 7th and P. All right, and that same weekend at the SCCA Lincoln Pro Solo, 250 drivers out in Air Park. This is a qualifier event for the national championships that we hold in Lincoln in the fall. Uh, well, approximately 250 drivers will be competing that weekend at Air Park, and our long-standing relationship with the Sports Car Club of America is one that we foresee 10, 15, maybe 20 years down the road. So if you get a chance to go out, this is an amazing entertainment. High dollar machines racing side by side across a, a course of cones. Sounds like fun. And we're featuring a new category, the Getting Bigger and Better category. <laughs> um, we're we're going to kick it off with European Motorcycle Night. Have you been down to the Haymarket on one of these Wednesdays? I have. I have. It's and it, amazing. They take over 8th Street from P to Q. Pretty much every stall along that street is taken over for European motorcycles. More than 200 motorcycles are in this. The first Wednesday of every month through the month of October, and I want to thank personally Dave Norris with the city for helping get this event established in downtown Lincoln. Well, this is the first year that 8th Street is actually going to be closed for the event, so that will allow them to have more bikes and, and more of a festival atmosphere with people roaming around. Yeah, stop down, grab a cup of coffee or maybe dinner down there in the Haymarket and walk out and take a look at some amazing motorcycles. It's really pretty fun. Our friend Tom Lar Lorenz couldn't be here today, so let's run through the Pershing events real mm -hmm. quick. Yeah, they feature the No Coast Derby Girls. Roller Derby is still hot in Lincoln and will be for many years to come. The Taste of Home Cooking School, a great event. Maybe surprise mom upcoming Mother's Day with uh, some tickets to this and take her down to that event. LPS, the Lincoln Public Schools, will have their graduations. And wrapping up into June, Fight Club Boxing returns to the Pershing Center stage. Tom Lorenz has done a great job with some ultimate fighting as well as boxing over the last few months. And check it all out at PershingCenter.com. And now let's eat. Um, farmers <laughs> markets, they're all kicking off. I think the old Cheney one has already started. 
Um, I know of three farmers markets. There's Haymarket, Piedmont, and Old Cheney. Are you aware of any others? No, there have been some in the past. Uh, I think it would probably be good if the people out there watching know of another farmers market to maybe give us a call. That's right. And we could include it on future shows. But the Haymarket has an amazing tradition. I think the Old Cheney one is starting to really gain some incredible momentum. And then the Piedmont one for runs from 8 to noon on Saturday. So a couple Saturday opportunities as well as a Sunday midday uh, opportunity at Old Cheney. All right. We want to talk about... Um, Food Bank fundraiser, that is one of my favorite food events of the year, Empty Bowls. I love soup. And this is soup from 14 different restaurants and the Good Neighbor Community Center. People need to get their tickets early because they do sell out. Very affordable at that. $25 gets you a bowl from Down Under Pottery and all the soup you can eat over this time. Uh, features 14 different restaurants and the Good Neighbor Community Center, as you mentioned, is highly involved in this. And I too love soup as well. And there's just so many varieties, but it's a great cause that this helps out. Yes, it is. We want to mention another fundraiser, Drawing the Line Next Generation, which is the Hayden's annual fundraiser. And this one features emerging artists. Yes, and we have a lot of great emerging artists. If you walk down around the Hayden Art Center on any given day, you can see a lot of those people participating in, in different things in, in the hay market. They'll have live music and food, and the first 50 tickets sold get a print by a local artist. So that's, that's some incentive right there. Another go after. We do want to mention we did feature the Marseille White Corded Quilting Exhibit at the International Quilt Study Center on our show. And we want to let you know this is your final warning. It closes May 22nd if you haven't seen these amazing quilts. This is the, um, the first U.S. exhibition of these antique French quilts. So don't let them get out of Lincoln without, without seeing them. They really are fabulous. Um, the Nebraska Book, Book Festival coming up May 21st. Yes, two sites this year, New Vibe, Juice, and Java, as well as the Nebraska History Museum. Now, as a child, I always enjoyed Mrs. Lewis reading me books on the steps of my elementary school out in East Lincoln. But this is a chance for you to have Nebraska authors read you books during this event. It's a free writer's workshop as well. And a Pulitzer Prize winning Ted Kuzer, our own U.S. Pulitzer Laureate, will be there as well, and uh, just a fun event that features a lot of great books. All right. Some theater, The Sound of Music, runs through the 22nd at the Lincoln Community Playhouse, and that's always, you know, it's, it's such a beloved musical. Yes. Uh, Tada's got a comedy. Had a chance to actually view a little bit of this back in September. Bob Rook and his group with Tada helped us kick off the Nebraska uh, Tourism Conference in Lincoln, Nebraska at the Rococo Theater, and they took bits and pieces of this in front of our tourism audience and our peers across the state it was met with amazing reviews and this is a larger scale version so if you've ever traveled out there and experienced anything humorous this will be the production to go see. <laughs> All right. We also had Bob Hall on earlier in one of these shows to talk about Midsummer, Midsummer Night's Dream and with the Swan Theater being renovated they're taking this to the Community Foundation Gardens and maybe beyond that so um, that all starts up in June. Uh, lots of music talking to talk about. Uh, Lincoln Civic Choir is collaborating with the Lincoln Chapter of the American Guild of Organists and the Lincoln Homeschool Choir. That sounds like fun. Voices and pipes, very well put. All right, and then Aubin Music, another collaboration, this one with the Lincoln Org Organ Showcase. Lincoln Organ, organ Showcase. Showcase. And this will feature young organ virtuoso Andrew Cotilo to the community. May not have pronounced his name right, but I hope people get a chance to take a look at this. He will be joined by the Aubin Music Chorus as well during this production. All right, we have a young visitor coming to Lincoln. Uh, she lives in Boston, but her grandparents live here. She's 11 years old. She's appeared at Carnegie Hall and on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Wow. She's actually the scholarship winner of the Lang International Music Foundation and recently won the AS. CAP Young Composer Award for her first symphony. 11 years old. I know. Think about her future, but this is a chance to go down and see her at First Plymouth Congregational Church. Wow, that sounds, uh, that's going to be amazing. Yes. And we're going to talk about Nebraska Brass presenting a very um, appropriate topic. Their concert's called Summertime. <laughs> Talked a lot about Summertime. It's, it's right on our doorstep. A lot of great seasonal favorites. Works by Claude Lejeune. Bach and Gershwin, so it should be a great summertime musical event um, at Christ United Methodist. And the Friday night concert series out at South Point is starting to draw really big crowds. This is for a variety of charitable organizations. You give a buck and you get to have a, a great time there in the courtyard. It's a great way to wrap up a busy week during the summer, grab the family, um, take some lawn chairs, some blankets, enjoy South Point while you're there. And thanks so much to Julie Latimer and all of her staff at South Point for helping make this a wonderful Lincoln tradition every summer. Every Friday night uh, up through August 26th. 
And now for something completely different. Um, this sounds like a lot of fun. The Lawn Warrior Classic Croquet Fundraiser. This is sponsored by the William Lauer Foundation to benefit ALS research and support. William, of course, is the award-winning photographer for the Journal Star. He was diagnosed with ALS a couple years ago. And this is a croquet benefit. It just sounds like a lot of fun. In fact, we're trying to put together a Channel 5 team for this. We actually were practicing. A lot of people don't get to see what we do before we tape the show every month. <laughs> we were practicing our croquet <laughs> abilities here in the, in the, in the, you in the room. You didn't even know that those things are called wickets. I didn't. You educated me. I, did, I just called it a club. Google croquet, learn all the rules before we go out there and play. I don't want you to embarrass us. I will not do that. Two-person teams available, um, alternate shot tournament. So if you're interested, more importantly, if you want to get out and help uh, William Lauer and, and what's going on with this event and support the work that he did while he was at the Journal Star, this is a wonderful charity event, a wonderful opportunity to get out and play some croquet and enjoy these great temperatures that we have in the month of May. That should be beautiful. All right, again, that's lauerfoundation.org. And Jeff, uh, that's a quick wrap-up of just a few of the things going on around Lincoln uh, here, here in our, as we move into early summer. We uh, enjoy the opportunity to talk to people. Come and see us at 7th and P at the Visitor Center. Our website's lincoln.org or always give us a call at 434-5348. I enjoy seeing so many people out and about. We hope to see so many others uh, out and about in the community this spring and summer. And I expect you to start practicing your croquet. I'm taking off early today to go do it. All right. When we come back, some details on this year's Meadowlark Music Festival. Stay with us. Hi, this is Jabba Chamberlain. I'm proud to be from Lincoln, Nebraska, a city that gave me a great start in baseball. Even now as a Major League Baseball player, some of my fondest memories are the games that I played at Sherman Field. Now this historic ballpark needs our help. Please join me in the Lincoln Parks Foundation in supporting its renovation. Visit shermanfield.org for more information. Thank you for supporting the Sherman Field Forever campaign. Welcome back to Out and About. There's only one summer festival in Nebraska that features classical music, the Metal Art Music Festival, and it's coming up June 2nd through the 11th. Joining me to talk about this year's event is Executive Director Tamara Cass and Lexi Fromm. She's a board member. Thank you both for being here. Um, Tamara, let's start with the Metal Art Festival. This is chamber music in interesting venues. What, what is the goal of this festival? Um, the goal is to take chamber music or take classical music and crossover classical music out of the traditional space where you would hear it, which is with in a symphony hall or in another small space. Um, we have Lincoln Friends of or Ch Children Ch Friends of Chamber Music now, and so they're in a concert venue um, that's pretty traditional. And ours is to try to get it out to where it's very natural, you're in nature, and you're able to hear this beautiful music. And um, it's very inspiring, very relaxing, um, great for kids because they don't have to be quiet. Um, so it's a terrific. That's how I got involved in it initially, was taking my children, who are young string players, to this because I didn't have to say, shh, 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 no, 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 don't talk now, and, or don't clap now. It's very loose and very relaxed that way. So. Very informal mm -hmm. setting. Very. Yes. Um, and you try like, to, make, to make it very accessible. Very. So our price points are very low for a concert, usually around ten dollars. Um, children oftentimes are free for most concerts. So yeah, and we were always working with folks to make it very fun and uplifting and offer food and very accessible in that way. All right, Lexi, how did you get involved with the festival? Well, um, the first time I attended Meadowlark was out at James Arthur Vineyard, the winery concert, and um, it didn't take very long and I was hooked. Um, I went with some friends. We didn't have really anything to do on a Friday night, and um, I think that next year I was asked to join the board, and so I've been a part of it. This will be my sixth year on the board of directors, and it's been a lot of fun. What do you enjoy the most about it? Um, the casual concept behind it. Um, I think, like a lot of people um, in um, my demographic, you know, always think sort of that stuffy classical chamber music. It's not for us. We're, we're scared. We're nervous. Um, but it's not. People come in jeans and t-shirts and shorts and sandals, and um, that really makes a difference for people because um, it's really casual. All right. Well, let's run through this this year's schedule. Everything kicks off June 2nd with something new, cartoons. Right, right. Um, we always have an art component. From the beginning, there's a collection actually called the Metal Art Collection that's over at the Museum of Nebraska Art. It's all Nebraskan artists, very big Nebraskan artists. Uh, Stephen Dinsmore, Keith Jacobs Hagen, Karen Cook are part of the collection. They're do uh, are commissioned to do a piece that's um, focused around the meadowlark, the state, state bird. 
and and the met and that's inspired by Metal Ark, our music festival. And this is the eleventh piece, and it's actually been chosen to be a piece of cartoon art. So we're honoring cartooning and that our idea of being family friendly, and so we've got some great cartoon art coming, and we're actually hosting five or six other cartoonists, six total, um, for an event that kicks off June 2nd that's a fundraiser at the Hayden Art Gallery. Then we'll follow that up with First Friday, and the cartoonists will be there meeting and greeting, and they have books that they've published, their artwork will be on display, they'll have um, drawn a piece that the evening before on the second live, and then we'll be showing those off and drawing caricatures for customers as well, for patrons as well. That sounds like fun. So that kicks things off June 2nd and 3rd, and both of those events are at the Hayden Art Center. And then you head out to Grand Island for the Metal Lark Invasion. They always, Grand Island Stir Museum loves to have us participate and they actually do that as a fundraiser for the museum, which they're doing a major addition that they're starting to kick off a capital campaign for. So this will be part of that. And you have a Grammy Award winner coming this year, Dave Edgar. Tell us about him. We do. Dave, um, we met him in New York and his group, um, he calls it his band, Dioro. Um, it's very eclectic. They're wonderful musicians. They he um, collaborated with Kataro to win his Grammy or to uh, win his Grammy nomination, and had an exciting time attending the Grammys. As a cool guy, so he's right, very fun. The, uh, this is one of the his CDs called the Yoga Sessions, and this is a quote from Time Magazine. Mark Dave Eggers' mus life in music is an unending crescendo. Sounds very exciting. Uh, yep, he's touring tours all over the country. He just bounces all around. So he's excited to be here in Nebraska. He's excited. He's heard about Nebraska steaks. So <laughs> okay. Well, then you're back in Lincoln on June 10th for the annual winery concert. This one at Deer Springs. We are, and Deer Springs yeah. is is a beautiful venue. It just really beautiful. is. Yes. Um, we this would be our second year at Deer Springs. Mm -hmm. um, the great thing to add, um, this year is that they've actually built us a stage and sort of um, a stage setting. Um, so they're really excited to have us back this year. Um, if you haven't been out to Deer Springs, it's a really quaint, quiet place, um, perfect under the trees. Um, so it provides a lot of shade if it is hot, knowing it will it could be hot in June. Um, but there's going to be great food provided by the dairy store um, and, of course, wine, which is always fun in the in a summer evening in Nebraska. So we're very excited about and it. And that evening features Gregor, Gregor Hubner and friends. Tell us about that, that yes. group. Yep, um, Gregor's a violinist from Germany. He'll be here. And he's just amazingly talented. And he's actually playing tangos and salsas for us. So it's going to be a very upbeat, very kind Ooh. of sexy, romantic evening with the wine. And, and um, Jennifer, um, who runs the winery in the winter out at Deer Springs, is a fabulous. Just her wines are the best in Nebraska, I think. They're just wonderful. So. All right. Saturday, June 11th, then, uh, Metal Art moves to Grace Lutheran Church. This, this concert features Gregor Hubner, Dave Edgar, and a few other people. Right, right, and it actually would be our Larson Young Artist Award winner for this year, um, Nadia Mahu. She's from Omaha. She's only 14 years old. Oh my! Competed with mostly 18-year-olds. She's amazing, truly yeah. amazing. She's going to go somewhere. She's just fabulous, and so she'll be actually getting the opportunity to collaborate with the professionals and play a piece there at those concerts. They're little mini concerts. And what is her instrument? It's violin. Violin. Mm -hmm. All right. She's the best. Things wrap up then Saturday, June. 11th at that evening at East Campus. You're going to invade the campus. We are. We are. We're so excited. Big event. We are so excited about this event. Um, we have been collaborating with um, UNL, um, specifically location on East Campus um, that we've picked out um, for the concert that night. But prior to the concert, we are working with all of the colleges and all of the deans on City and East um, to put together a passport tour of East Campus. And so this is a very fa family friendly event that we're going to sell um, tickets for the concert, which includes a map, a passport map of East Campus. Families can go from so stop to stop, learn about things going on at the colleges, um, get their passport stamped, which will then um, get them free ice cream at the ice cream social. Free later that ice afternoon. cream. Oh, right. And it's, it's Meadowlark yeah. ice cream. <laughs> the dairy store. They've is actually customized yeah. an ice cream for oh, us. Oh, really? So, yeah. What does it taste like? Uh, mm, yeah, it's good. <laughs> no, bird flavored. Yeah, bird, bird flavored. flavored. Okay. <laughs> Little blue flecks. You yeah. know. <laughs> um, so they'll be able to um, 
try Metal Lark flavored ice cream at the Ice Cream Social. Um, the dairy store is also going to be doing a live barbecue um, on site, hamburgers and hot dogs and bas um, basket lunches um, prior to the concert at 730. And so we are just really invading East Campus on June 11th. Um, from four, starting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and um, it, we want families, we want um, groups, young adults um, alike to come out and enjoy the entire afternoon out there. So. All right, and the East Campus Show again features Dave Edgar and Deoro, mm -hmm. this group, so yes. sounds exciting. Well, you, you cannot do this without a lot of community support. Tamara, tell us about the great community support that Metal Lark gets. Oh, it's been wonderful. Um, Woods Community Foundation is always a huge supporter, as is Dillon and Coop Cooper Foundations, um, as Union Bank, Assurity, uh, we've just had support across the board from everyone that's over the last 11 years now. It's been wonderful. Um, and we have a huge, amazing Lark Society. Our Lark Society is our individual donors that we, they are so stable and we couldn't do it year after year with, without, without them. Um, so it's been terrific. All right, we want to remind people that the Metal Lark Music Festival is June 2nd through the 11th, a variety of different fun venues. Uh, if you'd like more information, the website is metallarkmusicfestival.com. And if you'd like to talk to someone about the festival, 477-2522. Again, metallarkmusicfestival.com. Thank you both very much Thank for you. being here today. And we look forward to beautiful weather for the Metal Lark oh, this year. I hope so. Thank you, Diane. Yes, when so. we come back, it's batter up for the Lincoln Salt Dogs. We'll tell you about the 20, 2011 season next on Out and About. Dr. R.E. Cycle here, urging you to get comfortable saving money. It's easy with the Lincoln Energy Challenge. Here's a fun fact from Lincoln's one and only professor of garbology. Recycling one aluminum can saves enough energy to run a TV for two hours. It's true. And with the Lincoln Energy Challenge, recycling could help you win a cool prize. You don't have to be a genius like me to go green. Sign up now at green.lincoln.ne.gov. Welcome back to Out and About. Professional baseball returned to Lincoln in 2001 with the Lincoln Salt Dogs making their home at the beautiful new Haymarket Park. The 11th season gets underway in mid-May and joining us to talk about this year's Salt Dog lineup are Marty Scott, who is the team manager, and Brett Beer, Assistant General Manager, Director of Sales and Marketing. Thank you both very much for being here. Thanks very much. Um, Marty, tell us about yourself. This is your third year with the Salt Dogs? This is my third year. Um, I'm a lifetime baseball person, Diane. Uh, drafted out of college out of Dallas Baptist uh, my senior year. Had a degree in business and a minor in teaching and never had, had, have had to fall back on those degrees yet, but uh, just got involved in baseball as a player first. and. Rangers uh, were the team that drafted me and they asked me to stay in first on, as on-field manager and then after a year at the A level and then the next year at the double A level they asked me if I wanted to manage in the big league someday or come in the front office and back in the early 80s the Rangers were firing their manager every other year so <laughs> I wanted a little more stability and I decided I'd go in the front office had a college degree and thought that I, I could have uh, utilize that and, and not be a stereotypical guy on the field the rest of his life, although that was where my true love and passion was. Uh, situation as a manager, especially with a young family, uh, you know you're going to be on the field every single night during the summer, so consequently if there's a piano recital that your daughter has or gymnastics recital, you knew you were going to be on the field. By me going in the front office, key events in my family's lives, I could schedule to be, th be at those events. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that major league managers were going to make several million dollars a year managing, or I might have might have chosen that avenue. But <laughs> you just can't put a value on on that family time, and That's right. so I spent a lot of time in the front office. But at the same time, it afforded me the opportunity to stay with the family. Um, after I left the Rangers, I spent 17 years there, first as a field manager, then in the front office director of player development. I've released. Uh, fans that don't know when you release a player it's just like getting fired so I've released over 900 players oh my gosh that's not a pleasant thing to do um, but I had some great players that came through the system when I was minor league director Sammy Sosa, Juan Gonzalez, Pudge Rodriguez, Kevin Brown uh, just to name a few and those were all my boys when they were 17 years old and got them to the big leagues when I left the Rangers then the independent league at the time was the Northern League which when Lincoln came in the league in 2001 that's the league that they joined I spent uh, seven seasons with St. Paul in the league, won a few championships up there, and then uh, my last year with St. Paul, 
I was actually vice president and traveled with the team and we came to Lincoln to play to see the new Haymarket Park and that's one of the reasons why I made that road trip just to see what was going uh, going on down here and, and how beautiful a stadium it was. Uh, I had known Tim Utrecht for a while, I knew Charlie Meyer for a while and and knew that they were very professional and and uh, ironically, I don't know why I said it at that time, I said this is so nice someday if you need a manager give me a call and you know, it, <laughs> and took, it a, took a while but it happened and, and uh, <laughs> Uh, but I, I left St. Paul and went to Fort Worth and was president of that team, which is also in this league. And then I decided, uh, I, went, I went to work for a uh, sports agency, which I did not like at all. Uh, cutthroat business, I got tired of trying to recruit so many high school and college players. And then told the week before the draft, we're going with Scott Boris instead. So it was just a cutthroat business. I didn't like the Mets called, said, why don't you manage our AAA club? I did that as recently as 08. Had a contract for 09, or a two-year contract for 09 and 010, and 10 with the Mets, but uh, that's when Tim Johnson departed here in Lincoln, and Charlie and Tim remember that conversation I had. And you remember the nice ballpark? <laughs> oh, absolutely. They said we'll come on up for an interview. We were, we got 29 candidates, and I said okay, let me, let me be the first because I need to let the Mets know something, and. Uh, so they brought me up first, and I landed back in Dallas-Fort Worth, my home. And Tim said, I don't know if we're going to hire, hire you for the job, but uh, uh, Jim Abel, the owner, said we're not interviewing anybody else. So <laughs> a couple of days later, they made their offer, and here I came up. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's really pleasant to work with, with true professionals and an owner that has one thing in mind, to provide good entertainment for the fans of Lincoln. And, and uh, I enjoy that part of it, too. And, you know, even though they were perennial playoff teams all those years from 2001 up until when I got here, they had never won a championship. So to be a part of that first championship for Jim and Charlie and Tim and Brett, were, it was very special. I was going to say, that's a great way to start. Your very first team wins the, wins the league championship. Well, friends and family, since we had so much success the first time I did the independent thing with St. Paul, they go, well, you know, it's just old hat for you and easy. And I'm going, I've got <laughs> more gray hair. And, you know, it, it's an uphill battle. And in both years, the 2009 campaign, which we won the championship, and then last year we made the playoffs. Both seasons, we didn't know until the last day that we were going to get in the, in the playoffs at right. all. So, uh, you know, my formula for championship is an easy one. You you make the playoffs, and then all you have to do is win your last game. That's, and there you go. There you it. have it. All right. Well, tell us about this year's team and some of the players. Well, last year, Daniel, I think uh, complacency set in. We brought uh, quite a few players back from the championship club. And consequently, I didn't think they worked as hard. I didn't think the team chemistry was as, as good as it was in 09. Um, you know, it just, they just took, took too many things for granted. So this year we're turning the team over and, and did a lot of hard work in the off season, finding new players. Uh, there's quite a few players on the club that didn't even know they were gonna be on the team until they went to spring training this year with their respective major league clubs that ended up releasing them. So a lot of players, who had dedicated their, their, their bodies and their minds and their season to playing ball this year were released in spring training. And we got quite a few good players that we picked up from those organizations. Uh, returning players, uh, our backup catcher, Pat Treadle, still here. Our uh, catcher this year is Robbie Al Alcombrack. He's an organization guy that not only can catch and throw and handles pitchers very well, but he can hit a little bit too. He had uh, double figure home runs last year in the league he played in, so we're lucky to have him. Phil Hawk, who's been with me, this is his third year with me, so we both had uh, a lot of time together. Last year was beset with so many injuries. He just didn't didn't have a good year. He came in 35 pounds lighter this year. Wow. So he's dedicated himself to that, and, and this is gonna be his last year to play, so he wants to put up some big numbers, and he's a fan favorite here. Uh, new catcher, uh, I'm sorry, new second baseman, Joe Ramos. Uh, new shortstop, Kevin Rios, who is, a, is another veteran on the club that uh, hit 300 the last couple of years. A lot of fans sad that we've lost Albanus Machado, who's mm -hmm. been here for so long. But it's time for uh, Albi to get on with his life, and we helped him get a player coaching job this year. Oh, great. In El Paso, where he makes a little more money because of the coaching title. He gets involved in coaching, and then if it goes well for him, then I can make some calls to some big league organizations, and hopefully he'll get in in the coaching with them. So it's a big even, family in oh, baseball. Oh, <laughs> it is. Yeah, I mean, if a guy plays hard for you every single day and leaves it all on the field, you want to help him out. And I think this helps Machado, even though the fans will be disappointed that, that uh, they'll only see him play when El Paso comes to town. Yeah. But uh, Rios has taken the job at, at uh, shortstop. Third baseman Brandon Jones is a returnee, but he played second all last year. 
but we're getting him back to his normal position, which is good. Uh, left field, Gavin Dickey, who was an all-star last year, was in spring training with the Braves, made the double-A club, went to the double-A level the first two weeks of the season, and then they made some trades and some roster moves that put, put some, pushed some players down from triple-A, so he lost his job. So and Sometimes it's not anything they did. It's just It's just other, a numbers game. That's, yeah. that's what everybody says, which is unfortunate because he had a very good spring training. Fortunate for us, though, that he's back and probably – ahead of the game that he was last year because last year he didn't have any spring training with an organization came in here and had a spring training with us he just got through with six weeks so he's in better mm -hmm. physical condition and in top season form uh, the center fielder is uh, Blake Galen who hit 379 last year and then our right fielder uh, we've lost Albanus Nunez hit 24 home, home runs last year I traded him to Lake County and uh, we signed a kid by the name of John Nelson who had 28 home runs. So we, we've actually done better in that respect. Pitching-wise, Lindsey Gulen is back. He, a lot of Salt Dog fans remember him from, uh, I think, the 06 season where he won 13 games here. He's 13-2, and two, which is the record for Salt Dog pitchers as far as number of wins. Uh, I had Lindsey 12 years ago in St. Paul. And, <laughs> and in 08, when I was managing the Mets AAA club, he was in Nashville. So we have a history, and, and uh, he just, he's just a guy that's not going to light up any radar guns with his speed, but he's, he knows how to pitch. Uh, Tim Brown, who's been a, a great starter for us the last two years, got released by Philadelphia in spring training. So he's back as our number two starter. We've got two other AA pitchers, with, I mean, pitchers with AA experience, Alex Maestri. And Tom uh, Palika, that uh, uh, you know, anytime you get double A guys to join join your staff with that experience, and they both throw very hard, so I'm excited about them. And then John James, a rookie pitcher, rounds out our starting rotation in the bullpen. We've got uh, a lot of new faces there, uh, guys. Uh, Nick Nick Schreiber, uh, Brendan Smith is back with us. Uh, Nolan Chestnut's back. And then our closer, uh, people were sad to see T Chris Thompson go, but our closer, P.J. Zoshi, is, is, is on the club and has had 20-plus saves the last year. And, you know, I told our groundskeeper the other day, why don't you take up, the, take up all the grass off the field out there at Haymarket Park and put cardboard down? And he looked at me like, what are you talking about? And I said, well, it's because we look so good on paper. So <laughs> anyway, we'll see how it goes when we start our exhibition season tomorrow night. All right, you can find out more at saltdogs.com if you want to check out all these players we just heard about. Um, you know, the Salt Dogs, when they started in 2001, was kind of the new thing in town. Um, how have you kept the fan support going? I'm sure winning a championship doesn't hurt, sure. but uh, you're always trying new things to get the fans in the, in the stands. Yeah, we've always prided ourselves on being a fun family and affordable venue. And uh, over the years, we've always tried to come up with new promotions. Uh, new giveaway items, new theme nights, uh, just new things for the fans to be excited about every year. And so we've got a, what we feel like is an exciting lineup for the two, 2011 season and our 11th season in, here in Lincoln. Uh, we've got a lot of new uh, promotions and some unique things we're doing on the ticket side this year. All right, and uh, more dogs at the park, real dogs in addition to the salt dogs. Yeah, you know, the tie in the dogs with the salt dogs and, and our bark in the park nights in the past have always been very popular amongst fans. And so this year we decided to take it to the extreme and uh, our bark in the park night is now every Wednesday night at the ballpark. So fans can now bring their, their furry friends with them out to the ballpark. Dogs get in free. All they have to do <laughs> is sit in the berm areas and uh, enjoy the game from the outfield berms. But uh, you know, that's just one of the, the nights that we're uh, kind of expanding this year with our, uh, with our Bark in the Park on our Wednesday, Wednesday games. And I notice a lot of these, um, these promotions involve food. We've got kids eating free every Monday. We've got dollar tacos on Thursday. Yes. Sounds like a great deal. Yeah, I, I, and in, t in today's uh, economy, you try to do things that are going to help people out. Y you always hear about people going to the ballpark and spending a ton of money on food and drinks, uh, not only, and even ticket prices. And... Uh, uh, we've come up with some really value-based uh, concession promotional items where on Mondays, kids 12 and under will get a coupon for a free Fairbury brand hot dog, Pepsi soda, and a bag of chips. So that's uh, every kid that comes that's 12 and under on Mondays will mm -hmm. get that, that voucher. Uh, Thursdays, like you mentioned, with our dollar tacos, but we've actually expanded Thursdays this year to include Thursday Thursdays. And so now it's uh, $2 for uh, specialty drinks and, and sodas out there. Uh, we also are doing something to kind of attract uh, college students on Thursdays as well this year. It's kind of been a thing that we've been working on here in the off season to get the college students to come out to the ballpark. And so we've got a deal where college students can come out for uh, two tickets for 10 bucks on Thursdays as well. That's good. I was going to say there's also a new $5 general admission 
uh, on the grass berm if you get your ticket the day before? Yeah, it's kind of a big push that we've made this year. We've actually lowered the prices on all of our seating at Haymarket Park uh, if you buy in advance. And the only criteria for that is as long as you buy the day before, um, you'll, you'll get to take advantage of this new advanced pricing. And so we have tickets in the berm areas for $4.90, so it's actually under 5 bucks. And then it, you can save up to two, between 2 and $4 on all the other ticket prices at the ballpark this year, as long as you buy in advance. And you can either do that over the phone by calling 474-2255, or you can go to our website and get online and, and order over um, uh, online through the Salt Dogs website. And then you can also come out in person and do that ahead of time as well. And we'll give you an easy way to remember that phone number. It's 474-BALL. 474-BALL. All right. Um, I trust that you're not going to do the cardboard field, as, <laughs> as the manager here suggested, yeah. but you do have some new things actually in the field. Yeah, we actually uh, created some uh, new signage on the outfield wall this year. We actually went totally digital, all LED boards on the outfield wall. One, it's a great thing for our sponsors to be able to change their ads up throughout the year uh, before they just had their ads up there all season long. Now we can change those up uh, as frequently as they want to. The other thing is we can do some uh, things with the players and uh, in between any promotion. So you're going to see some things with player images on the on the walls now, and um, you know the Star Spangled Banner with uh, the flag flowing, and some of our in between any promotions. So there'll be some interactive things that we can do with the LED boards that we weren't able to do before. All right, you've expanded the kids club as well. Yeah, the kids club is uh, another great thing that we've kind of tweaked this year. Uh, before it was just uh, Sunday games where the kids club members could come out every Sunday show their kids club card, they could get a ticket for a Sunday game. We've actually expanded that now to Sunday through Thursday. So each kids club member now has 10, 10 uh, free tickets to come out to the ballpark and they can use that kids club card any Sunday through Thursday game. All right. Um, we want to mention the website again, saltdogs.com. You can find out all kinds of things about the host families, your summer interns, the watchdogs, all kinds of great things there that the Salt Dogs have going on. I'm going to put Marty on the spot now. You were telling us about some of the places you'd been, you know, Lincoln kind of has baseball fever. We're, you know, doing another renovation to Sherman Field, our historic park. We've got two players in the in the majors: mm -hmm. Alex Gordon, Jabba Chamberlain. How would you rate Lincoln as a baseball city? Well, this is a very knowledgeable crowd that comes out to ball games. Uh, we averaged last year what 37, 3800, mm -hmm. something like that. But you know, on a given night, there's 5,000 in the crowd, and they recognize good baseball. Certainly, they pull for the home team, sell dogs, and. They cheer us on uh, endlessly, but at the same time, if a if a defensive player on the other team makes a great catch or hits a home run, they acknowledge that as well. And you know, from a manager standpoint, because the fans are so knowledgeable, it puts a lot of pressure on me <laughs> that I better act like I know what I'm doing out there, or I get criticized. But you know, they're just great, and and uh, I'm a fan-friendly manager. I don't like just to come out when the game starts and give the lineup cards to the manager and and then do my job. I like to come out in early interact with the fans. Uh, our little leaguers that take the field with our fans, I spend a lot of time with them. I like to uh, uh, congratulate the National Anthem singers both before and after they sing and shake their hands and give me a handshake for good luck. And you know, something impressed me back in 2001 the, when I was with the St. Paul Saints and came down to visit here. Something impressed me that wanted me to be a part of this at some point in time. And now I am and couldn't be happier. Well, we're glad to have you here you. again www.saltdogs.com and the phone number 402-474-BALL. That's 474-2255. Thank you both very much for being here and go Salt Dogs. Great. Thanks, Thanks Diane. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that is all for today's show. I want to thank all the guests who've joined us here today. I want to thank you for watching and we hope to see you out and about.